Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem ve ala alika ve ashabika ya rahmetan lil alemin. Salatu ve selamu aleyke ya nebi Allah. Salatu ve selamu aleyke ya şefi Allah. Salatu ve selamu aleyke ya şefi Allah. Salatu ve selamu aleyke ya şefi Allah. Salamu aleyküm ve rahmetullahi ve barakatuh. To all the participants and a special welcome to Iman again. For tonight's discourse. Um, welcome again. And tonight's topic obviously is preparing for Ramadan. But Mulana Mukadam has asked me to add on something to the topic. To say it was we preparing for Ramadan without samosas. <laughs> <laughs> so without any further delay, I'm I'm heading over to you and Iman. Don't forget to switch your camera on, please. Shukran. Okay, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm just quickly adjusting here. Not in the office, the home chairs are a little bit lower than what I'm used to normally. Okay, so all right, we're going to jump right in because I don't want to take up um, more than my allocated time. Um, so as we know that we are very close to starting our Ramadan, I think everybody's very excited. Uh, I do tend to tell my patients that it's not that you can't have any samosa. So if Molana's on or Molana's going to listen, um, don't fear. It's not that it's no samosa, it's everything in moderation. So a few things I like to look at when it comes to Ramadan um, essentially is something that makes your body feel better. So the whole purpose of the month of Ramadan is that we are able to then have enough energy to complete our tarawih prayers, to be able to wake up with the hajjud, to not feel so tired and fatigued. So generally after the first week or even after the first 10 days or some, some people, I mean, are quite strong and they only feel it towards the end of Ramadan, you kind of go into a slump where you feel so exhausted and fatigued. And this is the point where... Um, where we start having trouble, you know, and you're reaching towards the last 10 nights and that's your big nights and you're very tired. You find yourself, you know, dragging your feet and uh, more sluggish, if I have to put it that way, and that you are a little bit, you know, um, less energetic than you were, were at the very beginning. So we do start of the month very energetic and very excited and it gives our bodies like a nice adrenaline rush, but um, we need to keep that up. And the best way to keep it up is fueling your body with the correct nutrition so that you could fuel your body with correct ibadah so you essentially fuel your soul with the correct ibadah thereafter um okay so the few things i wanted to speak uh, about number one is obviously your suhoor or your seri this is quite important because often what we're seeing especially with the younger generation um and this is very much so towards the end of ramadan we get so tired and that you don't want to wake up for your suhoor so we tend to wake up just for fajr time um and you don't essentially wake up for your suhoor um and what happens then is that your body is actually starving for a very long time. So you think about it, uh, we're going to be breaking fast, I think, close to around 6.30 now and probably start our fast around 5 a.m. So if you're not eating anything and only waking up for fajr, you're putting yourself in an additional fast overnight for about uh, more than 12 hours. And this actually is very detrimental specifically to your muscles um, and your lean body mass. So what happens, your muscles start breaking down. And the minute your muscles start breaking down, your body goes into a um like a starvation mode so your metabolism starts slowing down and this is where we see a lot of weight gain so i get a lot of patients and or just even people that find me in passing and they say they cannot understand they eat nothing during ramadan but they gain weight and this is actually the main reason why so you should try to get in enough nutrition between your iftar and your suhoor that fuels your body um this includes snacks after tarawih and we'll we'll get to that in a, in a moment too um where, when i say snacks i don't mean all your chippies and your gums and your sweeties and you know the desserts and the faludas and those kind of things. It's the correct kind of snacks that fuel your body. Uh, so that brings us to not eating too much carbohydrates um, and too much fat in a meal. So this is where um, Molana samosas will then come in. So if you're starting your breakfast in the morning, it should be something that is with whole grain. So try to stick away from your refined carbohydrates. And this is when I say refined carbohydrates, I'm talking about your white bread. Um, you'd rather go for your whole grain bread. In South Africa, the difference between our white and brown bread is actually so minimal. Um, it's best to go for your low GI, your seeded, your whole grain breads, you know, the, the very nicer breads with the more extra things inside. So if you start off with this kind of um, 
foods, your body slowly releases, uh, you know, your, your blood glucose climbs in a very slow, steady manner. So even if we don't have sugar diabetes, so sometimes when, uh, if I mention um, a sugar spike, often people think I'm addressing the diabetics only. But research has shown that even if you have no glucose intolerances or no insulin resistance of the sort, everybody has glucose spikes. So we have these kind of sugar spikes. And this is why sometimes you feel that, um, you know, if you haven't eaten or you skip a meal, you suddenly have a low during the afternoon or, or like late morning, you feel for a packet of crisp or you feel, feel for like, you know, a glass, glass of cool drink or sweets or something that, you know, will give you quick energy. And then your energy level spike suddenly. So you get a quick spike and then what goes up must come down. So you suddenly get a low again, then you eat your quick fix again and up, down, up, down. And this is how your uh, like, you know, our days tend to go and this is actually very unhealthy for your body. So the other things is that it's not just only um, your breads that we're talking about. If you're having cereal, go for the oats, go for your barley, your talbina, go for your um, all grain flakes, your wheat picks, those kind of things that are high in um, fiber so that you get a nice, you actually feel fuller for longer and get a good release of energy during the day. Um, we see, I know my kids absolutely love to have chocolate spread on their toast. It's actually a very bad habit. Uh, we try to cut it down specifically during Ramadan because again, that gives you sugar spice, you know, jam, sugar spike jam on toast is problematic as well. So rather go for something like a cream cheese or a cottage cheese on your toast. You can have it with, um, eggs on your toast, which is also very healthy. Um, look at things like hummus, uh, uh as well. And then most importantly, if you're having carbs at breakfast, try to get in a fruit so that you get in also a little bit of like, you know, nice sugar, but you're adding uh, more fiber to your meal entirely there. And this will, um, you know, help with, with keeping you full throughout the day. The other thing that we find um, often at Suhoor is that we, you know, when I say you can have eggs and toast, then we having fried eggs or we having um uh, bologna, you know, sausages, those kind of things. All of this is higher fat in your diet. And what fat does is that it actually looks for a lot more water. So you kind of feel thirsty throughout the day. And, um, you know, this makes you irritable, makes you feel tired, it makes you feel slumpy, and um, you kind of have a dip and then you lose out on your ibadah because you're, you, you're either too grumpy to pray or you feel that you're just so tired you want to sleep the day away. And that's not the essence of Ramadan. You want to have the maximum energy so that you can, um, you know, get the most out of the month. Uh, the next one is when we come specifically down to iftar. And I mean, those uh, those of us that like to have a full meal at Suhoor or Seri as well. Avoid your rice and pasta. So even though I think in most of our Indian households, we do have basmati rice, there's a lot of diabetic rice going around at this point in time. Um, breads and rice tend to have a very high carbohydrate. So if you are a bread eater, like I said, go to the whole grain breads, uh, try to, you know, your whole wheat, your seeded breads, those are a little bit better. But if you are going to eat like your curries, your pastas and those kind of things, try to go more for the brown rice, go for bulgur wheat, uh, like what you would make in a tabbouli salad, um, your quinoa, those kind of things. So you're very rich in fiber grains, which actually, you know, will help besides your gut health, it helps you to keep fuller for longer. Okay. Um, I think this one is one, uh, the next one is a big, big one for me. I find what really helps and it helps on a personal level as well. When we break our fasts in the evening, so you sit down at your table or if it's in the mosque, you have your dates, your water, um, a little bit of fruit or your, um, you know, a salad or something very light, you know, in that few minutes between your azan and time to pray salah, uh, you should not really don't maximize the time and gulp everything down. You eat very slowly, have a nice glass of water, and then we should get up and you go pray your salah. And this is why this helps to give you that break so that you're not having a main cause immediately when your when your fast breaks. You're allowing yourself to, you know, just eat a little, get a little bit of energy, focus on your prayer, and then you come back. And by doing this, you automatically see that you're actually not that hungry and you tend to consume a lot less than you would if you sit down immediately um, with your plate of savouries in front of you as well. So keep everything for after the salah. Don't bring it down or don't bring it to the table immediately. And I think this will go for all the um, the mums and the sisters and the daughters and that, that are preparing for um, iftar. Just keep it away and bring it to the table afterwards. You actually notice your savory bowl will probably go less for the next Ramadan, inshallah, when you see your quantity is getting decreased. So this helps in not eating six samosas, for example, but just having one um, to satisfy that craving. The next rule of thumb, which I um, 
I, I, I'm very big on as well, is don't sit at your iftar table without a salad or a fruit platter. So uh, your salads, your fruit platters, this can prevent you from overeating, taking in very high dense uh, calorie fulls, food, and it fills your stomach with volume. Um, so the fiber from the salad as well helps to give you a little bit of a, a, a nice uh, gentle sugar spike instead of a big sugar spike. And um, what's important is not only eating the salads, but or, or like what goes on your salad is actually quite important. So don't go for your creamy salad dressings um, or what's the other one that everyone likes on the salad, the Thousand Island sauce. Try to go with something light, like your light Greek dressings. Or for example, you can have your um, olive oil balsamic vinegar. That's another option. And then you can overdo um, when it comes to desserts. Uh, don't starve yourself. You are fasting throughout the day. If you do crave something sweet, especially after your tarawi, you are allowed something sweet, but have it in moderation. So you're not going to overdo that. So um, I think on most of our tables, mine included, there's always something sweet, but uh, will not like try to keep it away from the table. Keep it in the fridge and have it as your after tarawi treat. And um, at the same time, you, again, because it's loaded with sugar and uh, it's usually high fat, if you think of your desserts that are like creamy, chocolatey, those kind of things, um, you don't want that for immediately when you're breaking your fast. fast. You want to break your fast nicely, have your tarawi, and then come back and have something, um, you know, a little bit later just to satisfy that bit of crave, that bit of crave. Okay, then we come to the hydration. And I think this is a, the biggest concern for most people because our days lately are extremely hot. And um, going into Ramadan, I think the first few weeks in South Africa, we're going to have this um, extreme heat and the heat wave that we're having now. So a lot of people will think that at the time of Suhoor, you need to like, you know, bulk up on your fluids and they drink glasses and glasses of water. Um, I think there's two problems if we look at this. Number one, it's very then it's a little bit difficult to keep your wudu because if you're filling yourself with liquids, then your bladder is going to be overworking, um, which is one problem. But the other problem is that when you're drinking too much water specifically, you are diluting your electrolytes in your body. And um, at this point, this is when you start feeling fatigued or weak or tired. So remember that hydration comes from other things, not just your water or your uh, or like, um, you know, tea and coffee liquids itself. Remember that fruits and vegetables do contain large amounts of water and uh, that's other ways of getting it in. Um, I know growing up, my dad is very big on a banana every morning. So it's still a habit that we have. Every morning you have your banana. It's got a good amount of water inside. Um, it's got good vitamins and, and nutrients to keep you full throughout the day. So that's a very good idea uh, to keep with you is obviously then, you know, like a banana daily, whether you have it in the form of a smoothie or you slice it up into your cereal or your oats. I wouldn't suggest a fried banana. I don't know if that's a cockney thing or that was just a thing in our household, but fried bananas were quite big. It does keep you full, but again, you're loading up on the fat um, there. Then we come to uh, don't think not not to sit and do nothing essentially the whole day. So our movements decrease a lot with your days that you're fasting. It's kind of like our bodies feel like we have to go into hibernation, for example. And um, this is something that we actually need to prevent. So you try to increase your physical activity without forcing yourself to overdo it. You know, you don't have to go to the gym. You don't have to um, lift suddenly big weights. I'm not asking you to run a marathon. Just uh, try not to be sedentary. So whether you feel that, you know, if, you, if you're very tired during the days and you can't cope in doing any form of exercise while you're fasting, what you can do is take a walk a little bit before iftar, take a walk um, shortly after iftar, it, make it a family exercise, bond with your family. Uh, if it's after fajr in the morning, take a walk if it's nice and cool, especially uh, so that you're not losing out on your um, on, on the fluids that you've actually built up in your diet at that point. Then uh, what else am I missing? So I made little key points earlier and <laughs> then I don't know where I left the paper. So I'm talking as we go along. Um, so we spoke about the whole grains, about overhydration and not eating your full meals immediately. Okay, the next big problem that we find um, often during Ramadan is that we, you know, you, you kind of get in the beginning, I think this is more from a, it's a woman's perspective, 
in the beginning of Ramadan, you're excited to prepare your iftar. So we kind of use all our bright ideas for meals in the first few days of Ramadan. And then towards the end, you get tired. And then you're going back to easier meals, quick meals. So there's a lot of fried foods. So think about your fried samosas. Then you have your spring rolls, your moons, whatever else on the table. But then we're also making things like, um, you know, quick chicken and chips and stuff that just goes really quickly. So this, try to prevent this. And the best way to do this is, you know, work around different salads if you can. Make a different salad every day uh, rather put your efforts into doing a nice fruit platter or a nice salad platter for example because this will make the biggest difference for you and keep you nice and full longer um your teas and coffees so these are for um the cereal coffee drinkers and caffeine drinkers this becomes a little bit uh, difficult during ramadan i think a lot of people have withdrawal symptoms from the caffeine uh, try not to overdo it try to go more for your rooibos teas or your caffeine-free uh, decaffeinated coffees uh, if you can and if you really need this towards the evening simply because caffeine causes dehydration you do lose water through caffeine it's a diuretic and then you you know tend to get rid of all your fluids a lot faster and because of the heat it's actually going to be that you kind of dehydrate or dry up a lot faster than you would in a, a winter month for example uh, and then just some practical ideas, I think, uh, so that we can um, look at, you know, something that it's, it's easy for me to tell you what to do and what not to do. But giving it into a more practical aspect is, I think, a better idea. So in the morning, if you look for breakfast options for your suhoor, uh, something very simple would be like a bowl of oats with a fruit on the side and you add a little bit of milk to your oats and you can sprinkle some, you know, like chia seeds or some nuts. If you like nuts, you can do some nuts on there. So that's something straightforward, something easy. If you want to be a little bit more creative, you can do a slice of bread, whether it's your whole wheat bread, your low GI breads, your sourdough breads. Um, you can put your boiled egg on it with a little bit of avocado on the side, have a glass of water, have your um, rooibos tea with it. If you really need something with caffeine, follow your caffeine up with a glass of water. So if you have to have coffee in the morning, then you just have a glass of water along with your coffee. Um, if you are someone for very quick breakfast, something as simple as a banana and half a glass of milk does the trick. And then if you're feeling to, to go on more uh, like a heavier suhoor and you have a lighter iftar, which goes the other way around, um, you could do something like a savory wrap for breakfast where you could use a nice lightly grilled chicken, go easy on the spices. You don't want to fill your empty tummy with strong and very spicy foods because that can also aggravate your tummy. And if there are any existing, um, you know, like ulcers or heartburn and stuff, you're going to feel that discomfort throughout the day. So go on a lightly uh, spiced, you know, chicken wrap with lots of veggies inside or salad inside. You could do uh, like a breakfast wrap where you have a scrambled egg inside. Um, uh, uh, also put some lettuce, some cucumber, so, you, you know, something different there as well. Um, I am not too big with, you know, normal cheeses in the morning, like uh, your cottage cheese, cream cheese is okay. But when you go towards your hard cheeses, these do tend to cause a bit of heartburn. So it's something you should stay away from. And then for the evening, when you break your fast, like I said, you do your dates, your water, uh, lots of fruits and veggies and salad, and then a very light meal. And you, I mean, even if you're just having like a chicken salad, that's that counts as a meal. So I think this is uh, the one thing I forgot to mention is that I think in South Africa, um, we forget that savory on its own is one meal and soup on its own is another meal. So your soup or halim on, on its own will be another meal. And then food, food is like a third meal. So we essentially eating three meals a day uh, just at one sitting instead of, you know, like staggering it out. Um, I see a few people over the last few years now and again, I do it in my own home where, you know, one day we'd have a bit of savories with uh, your halim and then the next day you have your like light meal, then we skip the savouries, we go straight to the light uh, meal. Um, when it's savouries, it's it's a good option to air fry your samosas. I know it doesn't taste the same. And I know that's what a lot of people will say to me is it's so easy to say air fried, but it doesn't taste the same. Um, I agree that it doesn't taste the same, but it is a lot healthier for you. And you do want to invest in, in your health. And Ramadan is actually the time where you can make these new changes and, uh, you know, kind of start with new habits that you can carry forward that's even out of Ramadan. So it's the best time to, you know, bring in your new habits. There's a lot of studies that say it takes between 14 and 21 days to build a new habit. So this is the perfect time where you're not just um, 
not just fasting for like to stay away from food, but you can fast, you can have the intention to better your health, uh, to change your lifestyle. You can have an intention to, you know, build yourself spiritually and to build yourself spiritually, you do have to feel enough strength that you can actually um, make like, you know, have the energy to do your correct amount of Ibadah as well, uh, which is also very, very important. So if you're not fueling your body with the correct amount of foods, then you're going to feel, like I said, super tired and super slumpy uh, towards the evening. Um, and then I think to end off from my side, and I will answer a few questions if anybody does have any, uh, but the keeping up your hydration towards the evening. So if when you break your fast and you have your glass of water, then you have your food, you can have another glass of water. But I know a lot of people try to stay away from drinking fluids in the evening because you've got to stand for your 20 rakats of tarawi. There's these really nice bottles that you see everywhere. I mean, you don't have to go out and spend money and buy um, the fancy bottles that's the that has the you know the rakat counters on it's so every two rakats you drink a certain amount of water you can just take your normal regular water bottle with you and just take a few sips between your sets of tarawi so um a lot of people will do it between every four like every second set so every four rakats so that you that's when you have a tiny little break in most of the mosques um it's a slightly longer pause than you would normally have and then others drink it after every set so after every salam they take a sip or two of water and then continue so this helps to keep your body nice and hydrated and also you don't feel like by the end of tarawi when you get home you don't feel like you're a bit hungry when you're actually not hungry you're thirsty because this is the time where we start looking for the ice cream the faluda the desserts the chocolates um because you, actually you're thirsty but your body mistakes it for hunger um i think that's it from my side if <coughs> anybody has some questions I can answer a few questions as well. Otherwise, I'm waiting for Uncle Samir to take over. Okay, the floor is open to, to all the participants. Uh, please feel free. You've got the opportunity to speak to a professional. And besides that, uh, I'm going to repeat every year that Iman is also a visa. That's important for us. <laughs> so please feel free. So a lot of females on this uh, chat here today as well, or on the on the on the class here. Um, I know my cousin is on here as well, or my sister Latifa. Latifa, you got questions? It's your chance to ask. Sure. Mm, okay. No. <laughs> That's fine. It's like you're putting people on the spot by asking them if they have questions. Yeah. So welcome to contact me if they send questions. <laughs> yeah, okay. So it's now like a Molana's question. Can I eat my samosas? <laughs> okay, so um if there's nobody that's okay, seems like I have got a question typed out there. Uh Iman, I don't know if you can check on the chats. Uh, Good advice box cereals. Um, I think it's Ashifa. She's asking if box cereals uh, are they okay? So okay, all right. Yeah, I'm opening the chat, then I can answer all the questions simultaneously. So with box cereals, I don't say that it should be your preferred option. It depends which of the box cereals you're talking about. If you're going for something like all bran flakes in a box, that's excellent. That's a it's a high fiber. I'll couple it with like I said, a banana or any fruit and low fat milk, and you've got a good um, like you know meal for suhoor. But if we're talking about things like frosties or rice krispies, then you're running into a bit of trouble because those are high in sugar. So that's what you kind of got to stay away from so i think as a rule of thumb the kitty cereal should be avoided but the others box cereals will be okay and then multivitamins at suhoor is a good idea especially if you have been taking it or you have an underlying medical condition sometimes with low iron or anemia um, if you eat mostly like if you're a vegetarian and you need your um, extra vitamins and things like that for those reasons please don't forget to take your medication um, that's your multivitamin included. But if you have not been taking a multivitamin prior to Ramadan and you can take in enough fruits and vegetables, think, think different colors of the rainbow. So let's say, for example, you would have an apple, a green apple at Suhoor, and then at Iftar you have a, a salad that includes 
strawberries or raspberries, which is red, plus your lettuce, which is green again. Um, maybe you have later in the evening a yellow banana. You try, you're including a lot more colors of the rainbow. And the more colors you're including, the more vitamins that you're including. So that's a good way to keep track of how much um, vitamins you're getting in your diet. Um, uh, and then advice for acidity. So this really depends if you're on chronic medication for like chronic reflux or heartburn, that shouldn't stop because your body tends to be a little bit more acidic um, when you have long periods of fasting. Uh, but again, stick to things that don't aggravate your tummy, like avoiding the, uh, you know, deep fried samosas and your pies because those are made with butter and it's very high in fat. Same with your spring rolls, your moons. So the savories should try to be, well, should really try to avoid them if you have a lot of acidity. And um, this will bring us to one of the sunnas where you, you know, you, you mix your foods, actually, you know, your hot and your cold foods, so like the dates with cucumber, for example. Uh, this actually neutralizes your body's acidity itself. So your hot and cold foods. So uh, remember to practice on, uh, uh, we should all remember to practice on our sunnas uh, during the month of Ramadan as well. Oh, sometimes the other thing is sometimes a lot of people who have um, heartburn and chronic reflux, they don't do well with uh, high fibers at Suhor. So they like, you know, your all bran flakes, your wheat picks may be a bit heavy for them. But if you do a talbina or oats because of the different fibers in it, it's actually more better tolerated. So um, try you should actually be trying um, these kind of things prior to Ramadan, a day or two before, a week or two before. It's not too late to start trying them now to see how your body actually feels feels. And then headaches while fasting. I think we're going to have this question very much through Ramadan, can be through a lot of things. We do tend to sleep less in Ramadan because we sleep late after Tarawih. We wake up very early for Suhoor. We have broken sleep. Um, if you're waking up for the Hajjud and then you've got to wake up and take kids to school and then got to go to work the whole day. So you can have a headache from exhaustion. So this is where you can have um, your nap between Zohar and Asr if you can. I guess if you're at work and you're allowed a lunch break, um, take a quick nap in your car, not where it's very hot because it is extremely hot these days. So don't, uh, that could worsen your headache. But headaches can be from hunger um, if you're not eating the correct foods and fueling your body um, and eating a lot of sugary, fatty things, you can get headaches. And then I think caffeine headaches will be a big one. So try to like manage how much caffeine you need to take. So don't be drinking like four and five glasses of coffee in the morning, but um, your body sort of adjusts to it. So the first two, three, four, or even up to the first week of fasting, you may have a lot more of these new symptoms while your body really readjusts to it, uh, to fasting. But remember, I think our bodies have a lot of memory. And so within the first few days of Ramadan, we kind of remember what we did last year, Ramadan. So that settles a little bit. Okay, um, I don't know. I don't see any other questions, so maybe we can actually round off. Uh, I'm not going to talk about what the Quran and Hadith says about fasting because everybody's going to get all of that information uh, very soon. Just one important thing from our side when I'm saying our side, I'm talking with regards to the advice from the ulama that, uh, like Iman has been talking about diets, and it so everybody who's not uh, well in a sense they've got chronic conditions and it make sure that you get your advices from your doctors up front. I use a typical example like myself, I struggle with uh, dry syndrome, severe dry syndrome. So while we're fasting, we're not actually allowed to even use lubricants, you know? So that's something that we need to try and find out what is going to help us um, when it comes to food to try and get this generated, but it's, it's extremely difficult. So your own personal condition, please get advice from the ulama, get advice from, from the doctors or dietitians wherever it goes. Uh, that, that's my advice to everybody. And once again, Jazakallah to Iman, Jazakallah to everyone. And we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the strength to fast and make the best of the month of Ramadan, the best of ibadats. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadat, inshallah, in the holy month of Ramadan. Uh, once again, what we started last year was the Quran Sharif verses with translation word for word. We will continue this year. The surah selected the surah Muk. We'll give it for 27 days because there's 27 verses. We'll give the benefits of it as well, inshallah. Possibly there might be one or two uh, short video clips that will be going out. So just keep on watching the group for, for the chats. Share it to your families. Share it with your friends. And like Mulana said, every week, let's remind our family and friends that this class is taking place. Fisa
It's for Allah Park's pleasure. All the speakers that are here are doing it from the bottom of their hearts to, to benefit the people in the communities, to make the best of it, inshallah. And Jazakallah again to Iman, Jazakallah to everyone. And Ramadan Karim from now. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.